Interceptors are a brand new experimental feature that's released within .NET 8 as part of C Sharp 12. Now an interceptor, as the name implies, will allow you to intercept method requests and change functionality. Now you might be thinking, this kind of sounds like dependency injection and swapping things out. However, these features are very different. So what you're going to learn in this video are interceptors, what they are, we're going to look at some code, we're going to look at some theory, and we're going to answer the question, as a normal .NET developer, will you ever need to care about this brand new feature? Now there is also a related tutorial which goes with this video, which you can find in the description below, so it's got all the code samples, all of that good stuff there, otherwise let's look at interceptors and see what they do. As the Inceptor is still a preview slash experimental feature, it's not enabled by default, so you're going to have to explicitly turn it on if you want to use them. Now, if you've had any previous experience of enabling preview features in .NET, you'll know the first task is head over to your CSPOD file. Now, there's a few things that you'll need to enable in order to get Inceptors to work. So the first thing is that within property group here, you can see we've got this features tab here. So we've got features interceptors preview. Then we need to have this lang version equals preview. And then finally, we need to have this interceptors preview namespaces. Now out of this list, the first two are just default turn on or off things. And the third one does involve some customization. So basically, if you want to write your interceptor code within a class that has a namespace, you need to add that namespace within this list. Otherwise, at compile time, you're going to get an error that the interceptor is not registered correctly. Now, within the interceptor preview namespace, you're going to have to put in some default values and you can copy and paste this from the related tutorial below. But the thing to point out here is that I've added in my custom namespace interceptors location. And if I switch over to Visual Studio, you'll see that at the top, my namespace here is intercept location. So this means that when I'm creating my interceptor, which we'll cover in a minute, this is going to work without an error. And without doing that mapping, this code would not work otherwise. So the next step is a little bit weird, and that is we need to define a custom attribute in code. Now, the way that the interceptor works is that you'll be creating a method, you'll decorate that method with an attribute, and in that attribute, you're going to say which method do you want to override. Now, you'd kind of think that you'll get this attribute out of the box with .NET 8. However, that's not the case. I'm not really sure why Microsoft haven't done this yet. I'm kind of guessing is that because if this gets turned off, they won't make any breaking changes in the future. However, at the moment, this is definitely something that you manually need to do. So this is the code that you're going to need to add. There's nothing too sinister going on here. You're going to define a class. Now, an important thing is that you're going to create a constructor and it's going to take in the file path, the line and the character. And as you can see, we don't do anything else with it. And this is going to be magically hooked up for you in the background. Now you can see that when we're defining our class, it's going to be sealed. Then we're going to inherit from attribute. And then we're going to use the attribute usage attribute. We're going to say it's a attribute target method. Allow multiple equals true. Inherits equals false. And this is all we need to do. Right, we're now ready to start intercepting some shizzle. So I've created this class, which is called my class. It's got a method called my method. And then you can see I'm doing a debug.whiteline because it's a web application. And we're just going to pass in what's been calling it. Now within my program.cs, you'll see that at the top here, I'm just instantiating my class and I'm calling the method twice. So I've got c.myMethod, class.myMethod here. Now jumping back into my inceptor, what I can do is define a class or a bit of code, and then I can define a method and I can call this whatever I want. And you can see here that I've got a static method. I'm passing in my class and you can see within line 20 that now I've got this debug white line old class dot interceptor method. Now the key bits which is going to allow me to do the inception is found in this attribute. So we're now making use of that attribute we defined and you can see here that we're passing in three main things. So the first thing we need to pass in is the file path on my PC, the file that we want to intercept. Ew. So yep, this is a bit naff. But what we can do is say go into our Visual Studio, right click on a file and then do copy full path and then copy it in there and off we go. Ugh. So obviously hmm, that was a bit funky. And unfortunately, things for this example aren't going to get any better yet. So 
The second argument we can pass in is on line 19 here, and it's called line. So this represents the line within program.cs that contains the method call. So if I go over to my program.cs, you can see on line 11 here, I've got a call to my method. Now, the final thing I'm passing in is character. You can see here, character is also 11. And this represents the position on that line that the method call is made. So if I start on the beginning, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So M here is the eleventh character, and this represents everything here. Now, obviously, there's a lot we can say about that code, and we will do it in a minute. But next, let's look at what happens if we now call that class in the debugger. So I'm now ready to debug my code run the debugger it's hit my breakpoint and you can see here we've got to the first of my method and if i step through you can see here that it's gone to this intercept method and i'm writing old class intercept method here now underneath i'm making exactly the same call to my class however this time i'm actually calling my method inside of my class i'm writing out my class my method now remember this is all happening because if we look at interceptor i'm only intercepting the first method here and i've got nothing whatsoever to define a rule about this second my method call on line 12. now if you looked at that and you thought jesus that's bonkers i wouldn't blame you because let's be honest for most of us if you wanted to swap out what some method did you could just work to an interface use dependency injection jobs are good em. Now, the difference with dependency injection and an interceptor is that dependency injection works at runtime, while interceptors work at compile time. Now, you might be thinking, big deal, why do I need these interceptors? Why do I care about compile time? And probably at the moment you don't. However, one thing within .NET 7 and something which is growing in .NET 8 is a big move towards ahead of time compiling. And let's think about what that means now. So hopefully it's coming across the interceptors, they're not really targeted towards normal .NET devs. So why are they needed? Well, within .NET 8, there's a new mode that you can leverage called ahead of time compiling. And before we start talking about AOT, let's think of how .NET has always worked. So in normal .NET, when you compile code, it's converted into something called intermediate language code, IL. Now at runtime, the .NET framework uses the JIT compiler and then converts your application intermediate language code into assembly. And when eventually .NET generates this output assembly, it's going to be optimized for the processor that it needs to run on. Now within AOT, you get direct native assembly code generated at compile time and no intermediate language code is created at all. Now, this direct code generation should make your applications run quicker. Now, AOT definitely offers some performance benefits. However, it does come at the price of some trade-offs. Now, as I want to keep this article video focused on interceptors, we're not going to deep dive into AOT versus non-AOT here. Stay glued to this channel, as I'm sure I'll do a video on this topic at some point. Now, while interceptors are not AOT specific features, they are useful when you start using native AOT deployments. So in practical terms, interceptors are most useful for developers who need to create source generators. And in case you're not aware, the .NET source generator feature was introduced in .NET 5 and C Sharp 9. Now, source generators allow developers to create and manipulate C Sharp source code during compile time. And while things like minimal APIs have their own source code generators, third party packages are also making use of them. So some examples include AutoMapper source generator, which generates mapping code during compilation, GraphQL source generator to generate strongly typed models at compile time, and don't forget good old entity framework core source generator, which can also be used to generate strongly typed models at compile time. So hopefully, if you start thinking about interceptors in this new light, it should hopefully make a little bit more sense now. And hopefully, this gives you some nice background context on interceptors. And I'd say the final thing we need to look into is to expand the previous code snippet to see how we can break it. 
Uh, I mean, how we can use it in different ways. The first thing to mention is it's possible for you to intercept multiple methods with the same bit of code. Now, at the moment, you do that by decorating your method with multiple different attributes. You can see here that I'm pointing to both method calls now and everything's going to be a OK. Now, one caveat is that you can't point to the same location. You can see here that I'm pointing to the same method. And you can see here this indicated call is intercepted multiple times error. So basically, even though you can intercept multiple methods with one bit of code, you can only have one bit of code to intercept one method. Now, a second consideration are your modifiers. So you can see here, I've got a public static class. I'm trying to intercept this method. However, my class here is private and this is causing an error. So in order to get rid of this inconsistent accessibility error, I need to make this public and then my code compiles fine. The final thing to mention is obviously this code is janky as hell. In the real world, you're not gonna be hard coding file path on your local machine. Now, obviously in production, this is where we get the file path. And what will typically happen is that if you're creating a source generator, you can do something like this, get intercept to file path, and you can dynamically figure out how to get your path. Now, because I'm not a source generator developer, and because this is just a quick walkthrough video, I'm not going to go into the details of how we can set up automated file path mapping here. Probably just worth knowing that if you want to do it, there is some information online. It's not the best information, but it is possible. So let's quickly summarize this for everyone. So for the majority of .NET devs watching this, you're probably not going to need to worry about mastering the Inceptor anytime soon. Now, if you are creating source generators, or maybe you're working in an architecture where ahead of time makes perfect sense, this is something that you'll probably want to research. And looking forward in .NET, it does seem like we're moving towards ahead of time a little bit more. So this is something which might be more useful in the future. Now, I'm always interested to hear what everyone thoughts are. Do you think I've missed out certain use cases for normal day to day? For me, I think the configuration is a little bit too faffy for me to add into my unit tests. And I'm just going to stick with dependency injection for the time being. Now, if you haven't come across this channel before we leave, I should say that don't forget to hit subscribe. Now, my name is John and I release a video every single Sunday aimed at making you a better developer. And the majority of the stuff is aimed towards .NET. So click subscribe now. It also takes me ages to record these videos. I don't get paid for it. So if you have got value, click like. If you haven't got value and you don't like it, instead of just putting your thumbs down, tell me what you think I could do to improve because I would appreciate it. Now, before we part ways, the only other thing to say is I've recorded a video all about .NET and the other features. Now, before we part ways, the final thing for me to say is that I've recorded a video on .NET that covers all the other features aside from interceptors. So the link to that video is on screen right now. Check it out because it's a banger. And until next Sunday, happy coding.